So to take the exhaust off the Z8, you've got to remove the lower panel from the rear bumper. It turns out the tips are actually riveted in there. Uh, so they're fake tips that the mufflers just kind of sleeve into. Comes off fairly easily. There's a few fasteners, metallic fasteners on each side, and then a bunch of these tabs uh, that just pop into the rest of the bumper. So let's take a look. We're doing headers, for the complete exhaust from the exhaust valves back to the tailpipes. And it's well underway. Okay, we'll sneak in here uh, over Silverstone. So that's a Super Sprint exhaust installed at the headers with fresh gaskets, same as the M5, just S62 gaskets. These are gonna be four one headers. So that's kind of the hard part. Now it's a matter of trimming the cat section and then the resonators and then out to the, the mufflers. And I don't know which mufflers he chose. I believe Super Sprint makes two for the Z8, the ones that kind of look factory and end like this, or the ones that sculpt to the curvature of the bumper and are slanted like that. I can't decide which one I like better. Uh, weird thing about the Z8 exhaust is it's got seven ground straps all throughout the car that attach to the exhaust system. Nate suspects it's something to do with the aluminum uh, chassis on this car and just higher uh, amount of aluminum used, but there's more hanging up here. This thing's super, super clean, and BMW really went the extra mile on this car with packaging and the way everything here is put together. I don't remember if I talked about this the other night, but it's built like or better than a 7 Series yet it's got a, an M5 engine and, and a weird ass interior, but coming along well, the factory system is very carefully hiding over here. Got these weird angle mufflers that just terminate like that. And there's the two center pieces or resonators. And they even put a little brace in between that Super Sprint omits. Center mount looks like that. Nice shiny cats, cause this thing's clean. I'm not sure if that piece is the same as an M5, probably not. I bet this um, tubing in there is just bent a different way. So we did the inspection on this car yesterday and got that out to the customer who quickly authorized about half the work. I wrote up the estimates for it this morning, sent that out five minutes later, he authorized everything I proposed. So parts are on order and have already begun coming in. It's not a ton of stuff. It's like filters, fluids, uh, fuel filters on that list. So I'm gonna have to figure out where that's hiding on the Z8. Motor mounts, hood struts. As you can see, we've got the little cheater in there. Hood struts are original. You can't buy them from Stabilis or anybody, so they're like $75 a piece for the hood struts from BMW, but they are huge. So this will keep us busy tomorrow and likely into Thursday. I think tomorrow's Wednesday. This week is flying. Um, this guy's approved timing chains and guides, so we took in about three quarters of the parts today, all the local stuff from original equipment suppliers, and we should be starting that by the end of the week. Josh's car is, is uh, still pending a PDC sensor, but that came in today, which will allow us to finish the rear bumper assembly. I've got to get the headlights aimed in here when I can uh, drive up to my level marks on the wall over there. And then we've got to pull the sunroof glass to see what is making all this noise. And if you push the glass, it comes up. So it's those little plastic arms that are responsible for tilting. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to replace that without dropping the whole headliner and replacing the entire cassette, which will likely be cost prohibitive due to labor. Steve's car, we're really hung up on that uh, front bumper impact strut thing because this one won't adjust. It's on the way from Germany. I'm expecting it in about two weeks. In the meantime, we're keeping it charged up. I know it's close, but they are not touching. I removed the transmission today from Max's 2000 540. Um, he had initially declined the transmission repair. We did the shifter carrier, trans mounts, a whole bunch of driveline work, put it all back together, and it gets stuck in fourth gear. It is totally stuck in fourth gear. I cannot get it out. Something internal has failed. So it is now being replaced. He's had to double pay labor to pull the exhaust off, which I did by myself today. That was fun. Thankfully, it has a lot of pieces missing, so it's probably only about 45 pounds. It's just kind of awkward due to size. Drive shaft's back out, of course. Transmission came off fairly easily. I uh, found a bunch more missing hardware. There were a bunch of bell housing bolts missing or incorrect. There's washers missing. It's whoever worked on this car had absolutely no clue what they were doing. But there's leaky pipes. There's leaky stuff in there that will need to be addressed. No, it's not going to be dripping on this car. I've cleaned it all up for now. But he's not choosing to proceed with any of that. So maybe we'll get to do this a third time in a few months. I also talked him into tires. Uh, he's got Yokohama's on the way, so... These will be going, which is good. These things are what? Non, non Kong. Never heard of it. So this box is completely full of uh, the stuff for the timing guide car. The only thing that's kind of not related is this snorkel here, which by the way, these are available. Again, I think BMW's made more of them, or at least the right side is available. I'm not sure about the left. We got the oil, the tensioners, filters and stuff in here, and timing chains, guides. Uh, we still have valve covers coming. He's elected to replace both of those. I still don't understand why they put the 
oil pan uh, gasket in this massive container, but that's not my decision. So that'll be nice. That's a really nice 540 as is, and having the guides done is, is really gonna add value to the car and certainly peace of mind at about 130,000 miles, I think. Got another Silverstone car in here, uh, Silverstone 2000. This is the one with the Lamar blue interior. It came in for uh, check engine light. Two primary causes. The active cause is the cat efficiency, which we're gonna be taking care of. And the secondary cause is secondary air flow too low. This car's had that trouble for years. His, his brother works at like some Toyota shop and came up with this kind of janky solution that just ran this hose from the intake manifold back to the exhaust or intake manifold area rather um, throughout the engine bay and, and never had problems up until recently. So we did a shark tune today with the SAI delete, did some other custom programming for him, changed the cabin filters, and now he's complaining about a groaning differential at uh, low speeds and uh, almost a full lock turn which is not good and probably means the clutch packs are shot in the diff. So I get to tell him that tomorrow. Got more parts for the timing guide car. Uh, he's doing the fan and fan clutch as part of that service. And he, he kind of asked, he's smart. He's like, hey, uh, what else are you gonna find when you dig in here? And I said, well, my list is actually extremely thorough regarding engine internals and things like that. But of course we have to disassemble the belt drive and all the accessories on the front of the engine. So there's a chance you need uh, any array of pulleys and tensioners, belts themselves. Generally, those are not terribly expensive parts. And the good news is it doesn't really change the labor much. In fact, it makes it uh, easier for us to put on a new part than have to clean up an old one. 